I'm sorry there are lots of folks uh, standing, but that in a way is a good sign. I have a little experience of book launches, and I have to say that this is probably the largest I have ever been to. And uh, I would like to uh, welcome everybody and thank everybody uh, for coming. stuff to put on my Twitter profile now. <laughs> thank you. Um, well, first of all, I would just like to say thank you so much for everyone uh, for coming along this evening. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't blame you for coming. If I wasn't here, I would definitely be in the in the audience. This is my idea of a dream event. Um, I'd also, I mean, I'd love to. I'd just like to extend um, my thanks to everyone who's speaking on the panel later. It really is an honour to be speaking alongside everybody here, and I'm really looking forward to the debate. And I'm looking forward to hearing what everybody out there has to say as well. Um, and. I'd like to just do a few thank yous. I'd like to thank everyone at Pluto Press, partly for working so hard, partly for putting up with me. Um, I know I'm demanding, but I get results, right? So, <laughs> um, Thank you to everyone who um, has helped put the event together. Obviously, a the theme of this evening is working collectively, and there's no way I could have done this on my own, and I'm very appreciative of everybody who's come along to help me. And I'm appreciative of my friends who've come from such far, you know, corners of the UK and such far corners of the earth, wherever Christina is. Um, so yes, yeah, thank you, thank you for coming along. It's, it's brilliant to see you here. Um, I'd like to, um, I'd like to say a few words about the book. And the the question I'm asked most about Stitched Up is why did I write it? Why did I write um, an anti-capitalist book of of fashion? And um, for me, I mean, it was partly. I think if you're a writer, you'll you know relate to this. Like sometimes you just can't not write something; it just bubbles up, and you don't get any rest until you've written it. Um, but for me, I just I just had so many questions that I didn't feel like they were that were being answered. Um, I was you know concerned about um, the the sweatshops that you know that run the fashion industry. I was concerned about the environmental devastation. Um, I was concerned, you know, about the time when I, I flicked through a magazine at, in the hairdressers today and uh, didn't see a single black face in the magazine. You know, I was, um, been, you know, been troubled by eating disorders that I've watched friends fight over the years. And I didn't feel like there was a, a book that kind of brought together all these issues and that dealt with them. And so that was the project I set out to, um, that's what I set out to achieve. And. Um, I've got a little prop here. And I also wanted to uh, to get people to start looking at the fashion industry in a different way. Because for me, I mean, you know, you look at this dress and primarily, you know, you just see like a, you see like a beautiful dress and it happens to be um, a Mew Mew dress. For the record, I got it in a charity shop. It was £25. Uh, Richmond charity shops, by the way, full of, full of things like this. Um, and if you, um, so first of all, like, you know, you look at it and it's like a beautiful dress. But then, um, Neil, can you look at the label <laughs> in there? So if you start to look at the, you know, like, start to look inside the fashion industry, inside, actually inside the dress. You start to look at... <laughs> 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 Alright, if you look at the, you know, you start to look in the fashion industry, and if the first thing you'd see... The first thing you'd see on, on that label is that it's made in China. You know, it's um, Miu Miu is a subsidiary of Prada. It's supposedly one of like, you know, it's like the, the, the height of Italian fashion. And if it's not a made in Italy label, it's a made in, it's a made in China label. And immediately, you know, that, that means that this dress um, has started to symbolize, you know, there were 10 million uh, Chinese textile workers laid off over the course of the, the economic crisis, that's a third of the industry was laid off. Um, China's textile industry is the third worst um, industry in terms of water pollution out of 39 industries. That's the fashion industry, it's the third worst water polluter. Um, you know, the, the Chinese, the people working in the, in the Chinese factories, they get um, about 36% of what they actually need to live. So this dress, you know, starts to symbolise all of that. And then Miu Miu itself as a company, I mean, this is, I'm going to just say, I mean, this is a deeply racist, a deeply racist, co like, company. They haven't, they, um, 
they don't have black models on the catwalks. There wasn't one between uh, Naomi Campbell about 20 years ago and then Jordan Dunn just recently. And it also, in terms of modeling, you know, the, the girls modeling um, in the advertising campaign at the moment, and they are girls, they're 14 year olds, you know, so it's going against all like the child labor standards, and I'm sure Daniel will talk more about this. So for me, I wanted to get people looking at the fashion industry and actually seeing what it represents. And hopefully, um, this will bring you to the same conclusion that it brought me to, is that there is no way that we can deal with the problems of the fashion industry by shopping differently. Like this goes way beyond that. The issues that this dress represents go way beyond just changing what you put in your shopping bag. Um, so that was the, that's the key conclusion that I came to in, in Stitched Up, is that we really need to start thinking about this collectively. We really need to let go of the idea that we can solve all these problems um, by shopping differently. And finally, I mean, on that point, for me it's not a coincidence that we've been taught that the way we change this is to shop differently because it's a, it's a central part of like, the neoliberal society that we live in today that teaches you that you change things by, you change things as an individual and that freedom is just variety on the shelves, you know, that, um, and that we must trust, you know, that we must trust in the markets. I mean, hopefully not too many people believe in that these days with the situation we find ourselves in. You know, trust in the market, trust in a just capitalism and that it will bring us to, you know, a place of safety. But, yeah, so it's not, for me, a coincidence that we've been pushed down this dead end of thinking that this is how we're going to change things. And I know everybody here is here because they want to make things differently. So I would say, you know, let's, um, let's work together on this one and let's start acting collectively and let's start supporting you know, the trade unions in Bangladesh and um, and the campaigns by people like War and Want and stuff and, and Greenpeace and and uh, the Haiti solidarity campaign and you know let's tackle this in a way that will actually terrify the, the fashion industry. So there you have it really. Like my aim in writing Stitched Up was to unpick a bit of capitalism and to you know, start pulling on that thread and start revealing what's behind, you know, what really lies behind uh, what we see every day. And I hope, it's my genuine hope that, you know, if we, after you read the book or after this evening, you know, you too will want to start pulling on that thread, you know, want to start pulling harder until it's all completely unraveled. And then hopefully, you know, we can all work together and uh, create something new and beautiful. Thank you.